In this video we're going to be discussing the lifting machine known as a screw jack. And we have looked at screw jacks before, but what we didn't consider is how we can more accurately represent the efficiency of the screw jack. And in actual fact the efficiency of the screw jack is dependent on whether we're lifting or lowering the load. So we're going to look at how that efficiency changes when we're lowering the load when compared to lifting the load. And we're also going to look at how we would calculate the force that needs to be applied to the end of the handle here in order to lift the load. So we're going to go through a sequence of calculations. The first thing we're going to calculate is the velocity ratio for the screw jack. And the velocity ratio can be determined by doing the distance travelled by the effort divided by the distance travelled by the load. And the easiest way to think of this is that when the handle travels one full revolution, the load is going to be lifted through the pitch of the thread. So one full revolution of the handle would mean the load is lifted through the pitch of the thread. And the pitch of the thread is the distance between two threads, like so. So the distance moved by the handle in one full revolution is the circumference that's traced by the end of the handle. And the circumference that's traced by the end of the handle is 2 times pi times the length of the handle. The reason it's the length of the handle is because that represents the radius for the motion at the end of the handle. So we have 2 pi L divided by the pitch. So we have 2 pi times the length of the handle of 0 0.42 divided by the pitch. Now we need to take care here because the length of our handle is expressed in metres and the pitch is expressed in millimetres. So what we need to do is convert 6 millimetres into metres by dividing by 1000, which is 0 0.006 metres. So in our formula in the top right hand corner, the pitch expressed in metres is 0 0.006. This gives us a velocity ratio equal to 439.82. It's a ratio, so it doesn't require any units. Next we can determine our efficiency for lifting and lowering operations. And the formula for efficiency is as follows. P over pi d times tan of beta plus or minus alpha. Now we've come across these terms alpha and beta in previous tutorials for the lead screw. And beta is the friction angle whereas alpha is the angle of pitch of the threads. So if we refer to our diagram for the pitch of the threads, then alpha is the angle of pitch here. But beta is an equivalent angle to represent our coefficient of friction. And the reason it's plus or minus alpha is because that's dependent on whether we're lifting or lowering, and we'll talk about that a bit more in a moment. But let's first of all calculate our value of alpha and beta. So alpha then equals tan to the minus 1 of the pitch divided by the circumference of the thread. Because we're trying to find the angle of the thread, we need to use the circumference of the thread, not the circumference of motion of the handle. It's really important to make that distinction. Now the circumference of the thread is 2 pi times the radius of the thread, or pi times the diameter of the thread. So as we're calculating the angle for the thread, we need to use the pitch of the thread and the circumference of the thread. Now we can either work in metres or millimetres here, providing we're consistent for both P and D. So we already have our pitch in millimetres. It's 6 millimetres. So we need to make sure we use the diameter of our thread in millimetres, which is 56. Pi times the diameter is the same as 56 pi, like so. Therefore, the value of alpha equals 
1.953. That's an angle in degrees. So we can find our equivalent value of beta. This is the friction angle, and so it's tan to the minus 1 of the coefficient of friction, or in this case, tan to the minus 1 of 0 0.3, giving us an equivalent friction angle equal to 16.699 degrees. What this shows us is that friction has a huge impact on the overall efficiency of the device. So let's make a note of our values of alpha and beta, and then we can calculate our efficiencies for lifting operations and our efficiencies for lowering operations. So now we have our values of alpha and beta of 1.953 and 16.699, and we have a formula for efficiency. Now during lifting operations, or when the load is moving upwards, we need to add alpha to beta. So that's for lifting operations or moving up. And for lowering operations or moving down, the efficiency is calculated here by subtracting alpha from beta. So we have two different efficiency calculations. The first, for lifting operations or up, we have p over pi d tan beta plus alpha. Now once again, providing we're consistent, we can use the pitch in millimetres, providing we use the diameter of the thread also in millimetres. So we have 6 divided by 56 pi, pi d and d pi is the same thing, tan beta plus alpha. And note that it's 6 divided by all of that. So running that through the calculator gives an efficiency for lifting operations equal to 10.10% or 0 0.101 as a decimal. So to find the efficiency for our lowering operations, or moving the load downwards, we're going to repeat the same calculation, but instead of using a plus here, we're going to use a minus. So repeating the calculation for lowering operations, we get an efficiency equal to 12.96%. Now this difference in efficiency will be much greater if we have a lower coefficient of friction or a greater pitch angle. So it's entirely dependent on all of the variables. Sometimes the difference in efficiency can be quite significant because when we're lowering the load, the mass is working with us and when we're raising the load, the mass is working against us. So it's highly dependent on the pitch angle alpha. So the last thing that we can calculate then is the force that's required to actually lift this load. We have a relatively low efficiency of 10%, so we need to work out our mechanical advantage. Now, as we've seen previously, mechanical advantage is just velocity ratio times efficiency. And we have a velocity ratio of 439.82. And we have an efficiency expressed as a decimal as 0 0.101. Therefore, we have a mechanical advantage equal to 44.42. Again, there's no units attached to that. It's a ratio. So finally, the force that we need to apply, or the force of our effort, equals the force of the load, or in this case, the weight of the load, which acts downwards, divided by the mechanical advantage. The force we apply, or the effort force, is going to be considerably lower than the force of the load that we're lifting. 
Now, as it's the force of the load or the weight of the load, we need to do mass times gravity. Its mass is 185. Gravity is 9.81. And we're going to divide that by our mechanical advantage of 44.42, giving us an effort force or an exerted force equal to 40.9 newtons. So we're able to lift a very heavy load with a relatively small effort. And the reason for that is because the effort force is being applied over a significant distance equal to the circumference moved by the end of the handle, whereas our load is moving a very small distance of just six millimeters. So even though our efficiency is very low, the force required to lift the load is relatively small in comparison with the size of the load.